Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be describing and explaining to you how to use Jira as a product owner. Your interaction with Jira is slightly different. It is, you're going to be looking at it from a different lens, and I wanted to provide some input, some feedback, and hopefully some guidance on how you should be looking at your utilization and interaction with Jira. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop a like if you get any value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments section below. Let's jump into Jira and stay tuned for all these tips. So the very first thing that as a product owner you want to be thinking about, and this kind of goes back and correlates back to the Scrum Alliance, the Agile Manifesto, is that the product owner is there to refine and groom that backlog. So as a product owner, the main place that you're going to want to be and the, the area that you're mainly going to want to be paying attention to is the roadmap and the backlog. We'll start off with the backlog though, because in the backlog, this is where you're going to do that first really big part of your job, which is helping define what needs to get done and helping with the prioritization, helping with the refinement, helping to make sure that whatever the team's working on, they're always working on the most value added work as defined by that product owner. Because you gotta remember that the product owner is kind of like the voice of the customer, right? They are the ones that are supposed to understand the business, they're supposed to understand the development, they're supposed to understand what the customer wants, what the customer needs, and if the market is changing, if those requirements are changing, if the needs of that customer change, that product owner needs to come into Jira, and in that backlog, this is where they're going to influence and notify the rest of the organization, the rest of the team, such as the scrum master, such as the developers, engineering leads, all of those great people. This is where they're going to define that. So in the backlog, if you don't know already, this is what your typical backlog looks like. And we're specifically focused on the area on the bottom. So now a couple of tips for you product owners here, right? So one, your Backlog should be ranked. If it's not, you want to talk to your Jira administrator, you want to talk to your board owner. And there's a section here under general that will basically tell you if you're using rank or not. By default, it should be using rank. And so this is going to be very key because the rank as a product owner is your biggest tool here. This basically means that if you want to take this item that's all the way at the bottom of your backlog and you want to say, hey, that thing is very, very important. And we should be working on that next or immediately, as soon as possible. And so in order to convey that level of urgency with your team, you basically can drag and drop it to the top. Now, if you have way too many stories, right? Maybe you have a giant backlog and this is just something that was just added and it's like a hundred issues down. You can actually just right click on a story and you can send it to the top of the backlog. And so as a product owner, you're spending a lot of time here. You're spending a lot of time reviewing that backlog, working with your scrum master, working with the developers to essentially always make sure that whatever's at that top of that backlog is the highest priority work. What you should not do, and I've seen some teams do this, is have a pseudo sprint, uh, um, an extra like a staging sprint, if you will, where they take items from the top of the backlog, move them into this new pseudo sprint, and then those items get moved into the official sprint. That's overhead and that just kind of messes up all kinds of metrics. And so by maintaining and just organizing and ranking and just grooming that backlog, you're gonna have the same effect. Because even if you have a hundred items here, anything at the top, it just, it just, you just need to communicate with your team that anything at the top is going to be the items of interest, the items that they should be focusing on and they should be cherry picking from those and only those items only. So utilize this backlog importantly, right? Now, the next couple of things that you can really leverage to kind of help you again, convey urgency, convey importance is to leverage epics, versions, and priorities. So those three things between epics, versions, releases, and priorities, you can not only will it help communicate the importance to the rest of the team, like your scrum master and your developers, but as a product owner, you can also use it as a sanity check to ensure that the guidance that you're providing is in line with the information and the data that's in Jira. Because the last thing you want is for somebody to say, here's an immediate fire that we need to go put out. And then you go back and look at Jira and there's no epics assigned to it. So it's, it's just like an orphan in Jira. 
the priority is like a medium or a low, which basically means there is no urgency here and there's no release, right? This fire that you claim to be a fire um, isn't tied to any deliverable, right? And so you want to use those three, those the priority, the release, and the apex to convey that urgency, that importance. And, and most importantly, you're telling your developers, you're telling your scrum masters why something needs to be prioritized, right? Because if you can get them to drink that Kool-Aid and then you get them to buy into the why, you're going to yield much better results because it's not just, oh, well, you're moving the goal pole on me, right? You're not just telling the story of like, well, you wanted me to do X. Now you change your mind. You want me to do Y. Then you come back in two weeks and all of a sudden we're playing on the other side of the field, right? So it's just, it, it can get very confusing. It can be very frustrating from a scrum master perspective, from a developer perspective, when your product owner is changing that, that goal line, right? And it gets frustrating because it's kind of hard to score points when you think you threw a perfect Hail Mary and all of a sudden you just added another hundred yards to the field, right? And so when you when you utilize the, the priority, when you utilize the releases and the Apex, you're essentially telling the team, look, team, this is important, right? And so we can we can relate to the Apex the easiest, right? We can create, we as long as we have an Epic created, you can just drag and drop it into the respective Epic and you'll see that the Epic is linked. So that's a one good thing. Second, if you have a release, you, you can definitely create a release. Next, major release. You can put some dates associated to it. But once you have those releases associated or created, then you can just drag and drop that story into that release. And you'll notice that it now belongs to a release. And the last thing is if you open up the story itself, let me close these out. When you open the story itself, you'll be able to see that there's a priority field. Um, and the priority field here is pretty key, right? It'll, it'll tell you relative to everything else, this is the highest thing. And now priorities can actually be renamed and they can be whatever you and your team need to uh, call them. I'll have another video in the future. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like um, and let me know in the comment section that, that you'd be interested in that. But you can also use your priority to kind of rank these, right? Because maybe you have 10 things that are very, very important, but you can't work on all 10 things at the same time, especially when you only have like two or three developers, right? There's gotta be like an order of operations and you can leverage this priority to kind of help establish, do this one first, then this one, then this one. And so that priority is gonna really help you out to, to kind of, again, set up that order of operations, that PEMDAS, if you will, for how your team should be using it. Now, the next thing and the next tip that I wanna give you here real quickly is, as a product owner, you're setting and defining the acceptance criteria. So if you don't have acceptance criteria in your issue, we have a problem. And so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that acceptance criteria is indeed in your stories. And so this should be a field, as you can see, it's not shown here. So all I need to do, talk to your Jura administrator, get a acceptance criteria field created. It's not by default built into Jira. So somebody does need to basically create the field and then they have to come in and add it to your screen as I'm doing right now, right? So you don't need to know how to do this. Just know that you need to get it done. And so now when you go back into your project and you open up a story, you're going to see that you have an acceptance criteria here. And this acceptance criteria, this is critical. As a product owner, you want to make sure that you're going into every story, epics, tasks, whatever, wherever you, however your process and your organization are, but at a bare minimum at your story level, you want to make sure you're defining these acceptance criteria because the acceptance criteria is going to basically tell your team, here's how we're grading it, right? Here's here's what acceptance means. These are essentially the requirements of if I want, if you want my buy off for the story for me as a product owner to say, yes, you have my two thumbs up of approval. It's going to be based off the criteria that I define in the acceptance criteria. So having this field Again, it's not built into Jira out of the box. It's not automatically in the projects. So as we saw, just me struggling here a few seconds ago, you want to make sure that as a product owner, you get this added so that you can then provide that guidance because this will make a drastic difference because when your team knows what's being requested of them, the chances of success are significantly higher because then they'll be able to essentially know what the mark is, right? They'll know what their goal is. And the final tip here is, and kind of leveraging this acceptance criteria, right? Even though the engineering team kind of does the definition of done per the agile playbooks and stuff, as a product owner, you're going to be coming in uh, into Jira and at the end of every two weeks, you have a sprint review 
and you have uh, your, de your developers, your technical team will basically demonstrate everything that they accomplished in that sprint. Now, my recommendation here to you is do not wait until the end of the sprint, until that demo to then give your blessing. You can actually be very proactive as a product owner. And if you're visualizing the statuses, you know that an issue went into review, you know that the testing is complete, but now it's waiting for that final blessing to move into done. You can actually be very proactive and just engage with your development team and tell them, hey, I noticed that you're almost done with this or that you're pretty much done. The code got merged. You want to just demonstrate it. I'd like to get the feedback now so that I can provide you feedback. Because remember, you are the voice of the customer, right? You're supposed to understand the product because you're the product owner. You're supposed to know the ins and outs, all the intricate details of what this product is supposed to look like. You're the visionary here, right? And so don't wait till the end. Don't wait until your, your review to basically say, oh, you know what? We missed the mark here. That's not what I wanted or... Yeah, that's that's not no right <laughs> don't wait until the sprint's like a few hours away from being completed because if you can provide feedback to your developer a week into the sprint and you go you know what this is close but we just need to tweak this a little bit because that's not exactly what i was envisioning or that's not exactly how i, I thought this was going to come out you your developer still has a week left to essentially make those pivots and adjust be watching your acceptance criteria be watching the statuses and be grooming the backlog for your team so that they can do that. And then the final, final tip, I know I keep saying final, is in the roadmap view, right? When you are in the roadmap over here, this is really where you can work with your team to essentially kind of help plan out the work. Remember you as a product owner, the one that are influencing the product, you help define what this product is going to be. So you have a huge say into what stories are created into the roadmap and in the roadmap this is the easiest way my favorite way of essentially creating a lot of epics and the decomposition into stories and this is really where the product owner needs to live right it's at the more higher level because at the subtask level that's really a little bit more intimate to the developer and what they think they need to do right versus as a product owner you're kind of a little bit more high level and you're giving your blessing here at the epic and story level so that's pretty much it for this video. If you found any value, make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, an opinion or whatever you want to talk about, are you a product owner? Do you use Jira like this? Do you not use? Did you find it beneficial? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.